Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to episode 58 of the Rainbow Grid. My name is Ruby Welly. I am a master dowser, master geomancer, and spiritual alchemist. I assist beautiful souls all over the world in welcoming abundant health, wellness, success, and happiness into their lives. Happy Halloween, everybody. This is my absolutely most favorite time of the year. Uh, I, I am just so excited today. I'm serious. I've had half a cup of coffee. <laughs> And I am just ready to go trick-or-treating with you all. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Check this out. You've got to see Helga. Look at this scarf. She's like a stuffed animal. And this is, this is her bottoms. <laughs> so my mom has a fleece kitty one. And it is amazing. The fleece kitty has a witch hat. And it's wearing little funky socks. It's adorable. It's, oh God, I love Halloween. We found these in the hospital gift shop of all places. Um, and I'm sorry about the background noise. The neighbors apparently decided it was time to take care of their leaf mess over there. Um, mine's still out there. I'm leaving it for the butterflies. <laughs> so today is a day that we celebrate. The veil is super duper thin. I know some people say there's no veil, but I tell you what, as as a medium, as somebody who does this work, there is just something magical about the air this time of the year. And it starts for me about the autumnal equinox, which is right around September 21st. And then it just kind of eases into it, eases into the flow, and it gets thinner and thinner every day. It gets easier to connect in with your ancestors, right? There is, like I said, something magical in the air. This is a season of transformation. You can see it in the beautiful leaves. You can see how people welcome the letting go of old things that need to fall away so that we can plant seeds for the new season. Now, some people say that holidays need to happen on a certain day and certain traditions. I celebrate my Samhain with my Halloween. Now Samhain is um, in pagan traditions. It happens on astrological days. So I just like to lump it all together. It just feels really good to me. It doesn't mean I don't celebrate every other single day of the year, but there are just things that I really like to welcome into my life at certain times. And I want to encourage you that if there's something you want to do today, do it. If it feels right in your heart, do it. Uh, a lot of people I know celebrate by having what's called dumb suppers for their family members, their loved ones who have passed away, and those who have walked the earth before us. Now, basically what they do is they set an extra spot at the table for their loved ones to join them for the meal. I do things a little differently, and I thought maybe I would share that with you. And then I have a couple meditation I would like to offer that maybe you wanna partake in and visit with your ancestors. It's just kind of a way for us to connect with our loved ones, open up that space, and be able to receive some messages. So what I do is, well, for many years, it was just my grandma. But this year, I added my grandpa to the mix. And very recently. So I have this awesome picture. I found this incredible picture frame at Walmart of all places. But these are like real wood slices. Uh, of course, I'm not sure what kind of wood. But it reminded me of my family tree. As I have my matriarch and my patriarch here, grandma and grandpa. And then that sweet little baby is me. <laughs> So I leave a picture frame with picture up, and this stays up all year. And then I just want to set aside. I light candles for each of my loved ones. Of course, grandma and grandpa are very special to me. And you can see that they're orange. This orange has significance to me. This was my grandma's favorite color. 
color. Um, and I have two this year for grandma and grandpa. So I'm gonna light these candles when we do our meditation. And then, like I said, some people invite their family member for a dinner. I invite mine for treats. I have I have a 16 year old son. He doesn't trick or treat anymore. We don't have neighborhood kids. So these guys are my trick or treaters. And from the time I buy their candy bars, they are always invited to come eat their snack whenever they feel like it. So this was my grandma's favorite candy. And this apparently was my grandpa's favorite candy. Uh, my mom told me that I was gonna buy black jelly beans, but she said that he only really ate those on Easter. I don't know. I, I eat them all, all year round. So <laughs> so what I will do with these, I will continue to leave these out. And then tomorrow, I'm going to take them outside and give them to the earth. So with that being said, I'm going to light my candles and take you on a magical meditation journey. I have some really amazing ancestor candles i bought from a friend this year uh, they come in little teeny, they're like the tiniest little skull photos and you put some herbs and crystals they are beautiful so i will light those later tonight and then there's a special little blessing that goes with it so one for grandma and one for grandpa Okay, guys, I'm not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> Sometimes this gets a little emotional, and I want to invite you to allow those emotions to flow. It is important for us to connect and feel and feel their presence. So close your eyes, take some deep breaths, and call in the beautiful crystalline white light from above your head into your physical body. Allow this to flow from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Allow it to uplift and shift any areas of pain and discomfort that you are holding in your body. And I'm sorry if you hear Zeus, he's snoring. Connect with your etheric body about four inches outside of the physical body. Allow the crystalline white light to flow into the etheric body, cleansing and clearing your energetic filter. Call in crystalline white light into your emotional body. This is located about a foot outside of the physical body. Allow it to flow in, instilling peace and harmony within your emotional body. Connect in body. This is two feet outside of the physical body and allow the crystal find my light to go into the lower mental body. This brings balance to your left and right brain and it's also going to wash away any fears or old programs that you're working on to. As the crystalline white light flows into all four of your bodies, physical, etheric, emotional, and low crystal body, this creates a beautiful tube of crystalline white light all around you. Three feet above your head, connect with your higher mental body. You will see this as a beautiful glowing white crystal ball. And this is your access point to the quantum field. And this is just part of my daily thing. So we are going to connect in with the sapphire blue ray of light. Call this in around and beneath you. This activity 
through our energetic firewall and protects you from any lower vibration that exists in the world around you. From the bottom of your and a ray of that beautiful sapphire light to the heart of Mother Earth and ask Mother Earth to activate any sapphire veins that exist below the surface of Earth. Pull a ray up from the bottoms of your feet and connect this in with the solar plexus chakra to finger width above your navel. This helps you step in to your personal power and your highest vision. From your higher mental body, call in a beautiful ray of morganite light. Morganite is a beautiful champagne rose color. This is your source of divine and unconditional love and support from the universe. From the bottoms of your feet, send a ray to the heart of Mother Earth, asking Mother Earth to activate any morganite veins that exist below the surface. From the bottoms of your feet, call a ray up and anchor this in your heart chakra. By doing this, you will feel a very strong connection and access point to your ancestors, your angels, and your guides. From the higher mental body, call in a beautiful ray of amethyst light around and beneath you. This is the ray of purification and peace. From the bottoms of your feet, send a ray down into the heart of Mother Earth, asking Mother Earth to activate any amethyst veins that exist below the surface of Earth. And then you can pull a ray up over your head. We're gonna connect this in with your higher mental body. Allow this amethyst ray to flow the physical, etheric, emotional, and lower mental bodies. Surrender any heaviness you are carrying and any karmic pieces that are ready to be released. Come back to your heart space and beam a beautiful morganite light to create a path forward for you to walk from your heart space. This beam of light will illuminate the path to your family tree. Awaken all Pay attention to the smells that you smell, the sounds that you hear, all of the things that you feel in the world around you. Perhaps there's a taste coming through. Use your third eye to see here. Pay attention to what you see. Continue to beam this beautiful rose colored light as your ancestors step forward. We're going to offer them some light as a gift. Now these light frequencies actually hold qualities that they can use to assist them on their journey as souls.
beam some sapphire light from your heart space to offer them protection and the ability to step into their personal power and intuition. Beam the frequency of lapis lazuli into the cobalt blue color from your heart space. Offer this to them, for them to step into their empowerment. Offer some more Morganite light to beam from your heart for them to receive gratitude. Many of those who walked the earth, Laura, have walked very interesting and sometimes very hard journeys. Many of them trailblazers as we were able to offer amethyst light by beaming it out of your heart space. We have peace, purification, and forgiveness. We offer a safe space for them to set down any baggage that they are carrying as souls. We hold space for our ancestors as they release those karmic pieces. Beam emerald light from your heart space. Offer the healing, healing on all levels and the ability to see true manifestation through a perfect mind, body, and soul. These are the true gifts of abundance and prosperity. Citrine yellow for wisdom. There are so many layers of wisdom. Offer them the ability to know in their heart of heart the journey that they have walked. The wisdom forward with ease and grace. The wisdom to share with us what we need to know to assist us on our paths ahead.
as your ancestors stand around you, beautiful space that you've opened in your heart. From the quantum field, I want you to beam and fill the space with the frequency of white topaz. May you receive this gift of transparency to receive the messages that your ancestors have to share with you today and every day forward from here. It is easy to forget that when you don't see them on the physical plane, they are always with you. From the quantum field, we welcome aquamarine frequency for clarity. Open our hearts, our minds, in perfect balance to receive these messages and these gifts of symbology that we have to offer us. May we receive them clearly and open heartedly. And with this, may we receive the gift of awareness to know that they are always present. From the quantum field, let's beam in some citrine yellow for ourselves. We welcome the gift of their wisdom. From the quantum field, we welcome amber, amber yellow, the gift of compassion, comfort, and warmth. This goes for both them and for us. Take some deep breaths and allow yourself to adjust to these beautiful frequencies. Breathe them in through your nose, anchor them in your heart, and allow them to circulate in your physical, etheric, emotional, and lower mental body. Invite your ancestors to share any messages with you. Anything that allows you to trust their wisdom as they grant you the information you need to walk forward on your path. Welcome any signs and symbols they send you. Thank them for their visit and their time. Know that you can welcome them into your space. Their presence, their love and their blessings. Come back to your physical space. Travel back up to your higher mental body, three feet above your head. Call in a beautiful golden sphere of light to amplify and seal the beautiful work that you've done here today.
Hold your awareness as your higher mental body, staying connected in with the quantum field. Rub your hands together. Place the palms of your hands over your eyes. And when you are ready, very gently bring yourself back into the world. How'd you guys like that one? That was something that was very prominent that I share with you today. Um, my friend Crystal has pointed out that the true day of snow in this year is November 7th. You have an extra eight days to do this work, connect in with your ancestors, and prepare for your, your big celebration. So cheers to having a whole nother week of this magical time of the year. Uh, make sure that you celebrate your harvest metaphorically and physically, whether you actually planted some seeds in your garden and harvested vegetables, or maybe you're celebrating your growth. I mean, it's been an interesting year for a lot of us. There have been a lot of lessons that we have walked this year as with any other year, but this year seems especially prominent in a lot of my friends' lives, including my own. So I celebrate that growth. And I, I welcome the gift of new seeds being planted. So another thing you can do is spend some time and really start to plan what it is you want to work on manifesting in 2020. Improved health and wellness. Maybe you're looking for abundance and prosperity. I mean, you know, who isn't? But, um, you know, maybe you're looking for miracles in your lives. You have the ability to choose, and right now is the perfect time to start planning and celebrating. I mean, really, you should celebrate every single day of the year. You should. You should find something every day to celebrate. Today, I celebrate being here with you, being in my costume, the magic of the season. Oh, it's just so wonderful. Um, the only thing that makes me sad is that it's a weekday. And my husband is at work and my son is at school. But I'm going to try to hook up with my mom because she has a great scarf and a little hat, too. And I really think we need a picture. <laughs> so I don't know, guys. Last year's Halloween episode was pretty incredible, too. We did some work with dragons and I wore a dragon costume. So if you're interested, drop me a comment. I will go find that and show you that. Um, if you want to go seek it out on your own, check out YouTube. Just type in the star, the Rainbow Bridge, Rena Dwelly, and Halloween episodes. May your day and your holiday be filled with the sweetest magic. Thank you so much for joining me. So much love to you all.